Dylan Van Barley has masterfully won the 2022 edition of Paris-Roubaix, an absolutely legendary competition that has given us some moments for history down through the ages, some of them so unrepeatable that it's worth seeing them again 100 times. Well, do you want to hear about them even just the once? Without further ado, let the show begin. Road Cycling World Champion Elisa Balsamo was disqualified after grabbing onto her team car in a little bit of a pitiful way, pretending to deliver a water bottle or a sticky bottle as it's often called, a technique often used as well in all fairness to her Trek Segafredo boss. However, the most amazing thing about her performance was to see how in this stretch of pavé she was able to avoid the fall with an incredible piece of skill on her bike, worthy of the best of ice skaters. In the same competition, when the final winner, Elisa Longo Borghini, was escaping directly towards the triumph, a young follower appeared in one of the sections near Roubaix, and in a way that seemed to rebuke the Italian champion for something that we weren't sure about. According to the winner herself, as she told us on Twitter, she thought that she had told her that she had pizza with pineapple. How nice of this little woman, who makes fun of us all who love these tasty Caribbean pizzas. 2021 edition of Paris-Roubaix gave us many many crazy moments. One of them was this one, the AG2 ore car trying to accelerate to bring water bottles to Greg Van Avermaet. But they almost ended up overturning in a curve, as if they were in the middle of the Donegal International Rally. More danger on the road than if they saw Jose Ortega Cano or Prince Philip of England driving in front of them. Some of the pavé sections in that edition more than cobblestone routes were pure mud pools. Have a look at how the peloton of favourites crossed as if they were in the authentic First World War trenches of water and mud with their bikes. True heroes of cycling, how can we not admire them? Maybe for some, the state of the roads in that edition was exaggerated. That maybe, they said, they were not so bad. Well have a look at this fan. He looks like he was competing against Michael Phelps in the Olympic Games in the 100m swim. I can't deny that I wouldn't mind to wallow a little in mud like that, just to feel a little like Lance Armstrong himself. There were many moments that seemed to belong to the Walking Dead TV series, instead of the full and savage cycling competition that is Paris-Roubaix. However, the most epic of them all was the out of control celebration of the winner, Sonny Colbrelli. It's no wonder that with such spasms of emotion, he ended that day with some tachardia. Ah no, seriously, we miss you on the pavé my friend, you are a true legend of cycling stories. It's not only winning in Paris-Roubaix that generates a huge surge of emotion, even finishing in second position can do it. Have a look at the reaction of the very young Florian Vermeersch when he surprised the favourites and achieved an excellent result for Lotto Soudal. The emotion shown by this noble athlete can only be compared to that of Donald Trump every time that he sees a Venezuelan model up close. In the last edition of Paris-Roubaix we have continued to have unfortunate moments, like this fall of the Belgian Yves Lampard when he was fighting for second place in the classic. Completely undeserved and because of an old man who surely was the first time in his more than 70 years of life to attend the cycling competition, he unintentionally knocked down the great rider of the quickstep team. What a disgrace that these things keep happening. Former cyclist Steve Chanel did not have a very outstanding career in road cycling. Even if he is now triumphing as a commentator on Eurosport France, have a look at how, while the riders gave 100% in the monument to be performers par excellence, this guy behaved like a real buffoon just to entertain the people. I suppose that thanks to people like him, cycling reaches the masses. So thanks for being a clown for us. One of the saddest moments of this last edition of Paris-Roubaix was when Belgian Baloise rider Jens Reidners was in the breakaway and in first position, 
and suddenly an unfortunate puncture ended his chances in the competition. A real shame for a man who was having the race of his life. But I suppose a great lesson for future editions of Roubaix. For a lesson that we all learnt, although it was thankfully a very uncommon one, was the one taught by the 23-year-old Belgian Michael Goulartz, the Verandas Willems rider who in the 2018 edition tragically ended up going to the cycling heavens after suffering a cardiac arrest in the middle of the competition. A young man who was making his debut in the race to help his then leader, Wout van Aert, and who was not as lucky as Sonny Colbrelli was to have a defibrillator at hand to save his life. He was not a European champion, he was not a Roubaix winner, and who knows if this would have made any difference. But either way, he ended up leaving us tragically. We hope that the availability of defibrillators during races has increased since 2018. Rest in peace. The Spanish cyclist Pedro Delgado was champion of the Tour de France and the Vuelta a España, amongst other great achievements. But in his 12 years as a professional, he never participated in the Paris-Roubaix. Because as he himself once told the cameras, he was afraid of the cobblestones. They caused him so much dread in his debut in the Tour de France in 1983 that he did not want to participate on the pavé again. However, with other legends like Andrea Taffy, he decided to compete in a tribute almost 30 years after his retirement. And there he was able to discover the charms of these competitions. Seems it's never too late to discover the passion that you have inside you. These stunning images show the greatest rider of all time, Eddie Merckx, triple champion of this cycling monument completely exhausted after finishing the classic of the stones. As you can see, already at that time they had to shower in some infamous public toilets to remove the sweat and the dirt of the cobble sections off the face. And there we're talking about a true legend, so you can imagine the case of the most humble cyclists. After winning in an incredible way in the sprint of the Roubaix Velodrome and wearing the world champion's jersey, the Frenchman Bernard Hinault had no problem in saying what he thought of that competition after receiving the champion's trophy. In his own words, the Paris-Roubaix was a real shit. And he had won. What would our favourite badger have said if he had lost the race? The former doping control missing cyclist Lizzie Dignan won the first edition of the women's Paris-Roubaix in an uncontested manner, dodging all kinds of difficulties and problems with impressive skills it must be said, that other teammates and riders couldn't avoid, and thus achieving an historic milestone for her and her team Trek Segafredo. With so much fire on the podium, no wonder that minutes later she also had to go to the showers. In her own words, first time she did it in her career right after finishing a race. How nice it was to see Dylan Van Barley win Paris-Roubaix. A cyclist who possibly deserved the money within his career alright, after having been very close on other occasions. But possibly the most emotional was that final embrace that the Dutch rider had just after crossing the finish line. Just for moments like this, it's worth being a cycling fan, or do you not think so? If you liked it, please like the video and we'll see you in the next show.